So what we're going to take a look at today, um, at 30,000 feet, I'm going to talk a little bit about the importance of social responsibility in the environment and the impact on our meetings. Uh, and just uh, draw out one or two differences and similarities and interlinks that we've got there. I'll talk a little bit about the history of Green Star. It's not a new programme, it's one that's been running for many years, but as you're here, it has changed a great deal. Um, we'll look at the survey criteria. Now, it is a very in-depth criteria, particularly after our latest update this year, where we added a number of new components that are more relevant to today's operating. But I will touch upon the main points of the survey, and then you can take a look at that in a lot more detail afterwards. Um, I'll share an example from one of our Swedish members of a cool uh, sustainability initiative that they have in play. And I'm sure all of you have got other examples as well that you've got in play. And at that point, I'll open it up to anyone else who wants to throw in a case study or two uh, to be able to add and enrich there because uh, I don't have all of the answers. Sometimes it's about just initiating a discussion between all of you guys who have got great initiatives going on as well. Um, I'll talk about how you get the IAC Green Star certification. And all of you are members today, so the first point to make is that it is a part of your privilege of being an IAC certified men member. So there is no cost element to it. It is all about process, evaluation, and us giving the and attaining the Green Star certification. And then we'll just open it up to some general Q&A and discussions. And I'm very happy for that to be, you know, a big part of today's session because I know. Um, from what I'll be presenting, there may be um, as many questions as there are answers that I am providing. So, to start with, I gave a little bit of a hint at the beginning about the link between social responsibility and the environment. And just to say right up front that the way that I really appreciate you thinking about the opportunity for Green Star is that. The environment sits within an incredibly important social responsibility environment that we all exist in. But IAC earlier this year, after our global board meeting back in February uh, in Brisbane, we created a whole framework around IAC Better to Tomorrow, which is our sustainability initiative. And within that, not only is the people, the community incredibly important and everything we're doing in those areas, but also the environment. So we feel that it's a very important set of a much bigger picture, which is social responsibility. And if ever um, we have a doubt that social responsibility and what we're doing in this space is important, just look at all of the great initiatives that we've seen taking place. This is one from one of our recent blogs that we did around the social impact that IAC members have. And I'm a true believer in the fact that we're one of a rare group of industries that touch not only our clients but their staff and we're incredibly embedded in our local communities around the world so the social impact that we have is phenomenal and everything that we're hearing within the industry today is that sustainability the environment our social responsibilities are incredibly important now, I'm going to let you into a um, few sneak peek results from the IAC Meeting Room of the Future survey, which I'm super excited to say is going to be launched on Monday. We're just going to get over the bridge uh, of a certain holiday weekend um, that everyone will be fully focused on by the end of today, I'm sure. And then on Monday, we launched the IAC 2020 Meeting Room of the Future survey, which was actually a survey that was created uh, from surveying our members back in January this year. So everything when we got our answers was pre-COVID. But within that, just to let everybody know, there will be a COVID um, perspective that's added against all of the trends and the results. But here's just a couple from the sustainability results. And this is coming from the venues that we interview over three continents around the world. 74% of venue operators um, felt that social responsibility and creating ethical operations is going to be more important in the future than it is now. Well, that's good news, but it's also good news as well, because last year in our meeting room of the future, research of 250 meeting planners, 
they also put that as number one. Um, so it's really important for our buyer. We really get that it's important for us. Um, and if anybody, again, thinks that social responsibility and the environment is going away as a result of um, uh, COVID-19, um, I hope by the end of this session, you'll be able to just throw one or two examples of why that's not going to be the case. Look at some of the areas where our venues have already in place the uh, ability to manage things like food waste. 90% say yes. The program to reduce consumption of single-use plastics, 82%. These are all really big numbers. 79% have an environmental or sustainability policy in place. What we would really hope would be the case that we have both an environmental and sustainability policies in place and social responsibility policies in place in the future. Where we start to drop down a little bit are our community giving activities for staff to participate in. Again, remembering that this took place in January, I have a feeling that that 74 is going to be up there in the 90s uh, if we polled our members again hey, Mark? today. Mark? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. I'm not sure if anybody else is seeing it. it might just be my connectivity, but I'm just, are you actually presenting uh, a slide on, on the screen? I am indeed, so thank you very much. If you are missing that, uh, give me one moment. Like, like a white uh, horizontal line, I mean, line here for me. So I don't That's know. what I've got as well, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for pointing yeah, that me out. Yeah, too. One moment. I thought you were going to try to, like, just make hypnotize me here or something. Well, there you go. Um, do you know what I did do? And I'm going to make life really easy. Uh, you can you see the screen now? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. So all I'm going to do is be very rude and look away from you to my second screen. Uh, but that was my bad. I picked that up. Um, so just to give you a recap, I expect a tomorrow web page is live. And you can see that through the resources section. I talked that through, but there's also some great tools in there as well. And I was referring uh, Dan to Wyndham to your uh, example which is within our latest blog on our social impact at Everyday Heroes and what you're doing there so again just um, demonstrating the relevance of everything that we're doing individually and this was the the first result where we saw social responsibility and ethical operations that's really important and as I mentioned here a number of other sustainability related um, uh, criteria. The ones where we have more work to do, a social responsibility policy statement, and certainly the ability to donate and use food and local community outre outreach programs. I will caveat that with, it's not necessarily the fact that we don't want to be doing more in these areas. Um, in some parts of the world, in some states, we are just not permitted to be able to, um, you know, to repurpose food uh, and donate food. So 23% um, shows that we hope that governments will allow us to do more on that in the future. This was from last year's survey, sustainability and sustainable practices are more important to our venue now than they were three years ago, 90%. So everything leading into 2020 showed that we were moving in that direction. And important areas like local food equaled that important connection to the local de destination, made our, research, our refreshment breaks more um, more localized, more interesting, um, and of course plays very well into the health and well-being um, element as well, because we're all healthier um, than we were when we came into COVID, right? That's why I keep this at this level, so you don't look down. Um, so um, meeting professionals are increasingly demanding something different. Um, look at all of the elements that inspire and motivate a meeting planner a meeting professional, um, technology, transport, but then look at it, caring for the environment, sustainable meetings, health and well-being, being responsible. Um, these are all incredibly um, uh, sophisticated, intelligent professionals in our industry. They are in the role as a meeting professional because they fit a certain characteristic because um, not everybody can do meeting planning. Um, and these are just some of the attributes that are really important to our customer base, which is why we're seeing the pace of change that we are. So let's dig a little bit deeper into this now. Um, also, what I'd like to do, if you have a moment, um, 
I'd just like to point out that there is a piece in Bloomberg uh, News just yesterday, which was presented by a professor of business at the University of Michigan. And he was drawing upon the importance to organization to having really strong environmental and sustainability um, and social programs in place, because that's those that didn't have it are the ones that actually coming into this crisis have been less resilient. So, you know, he, he makes a very clear reference. I'm going to share with you the article after this, because I think it's only a short article, but it talks very clearly about the importance of this in terms of how our customers perceive us. Um, and how they will become long-term partners in the future, beyond just knowing that we tick the box from an environmental perspective. So, ah, and here we go. I had got it. I thought for a moment there I may have, may have, may have deleted the slide, but Tim Par uh, Palmer here, um, and he makes his point. Companies committed to sustainability find it easier to attract terrific employees. These firms build more loyalty amongst customers and they forge in stronger relationships with local governments. And at the moment, we know only too well how having the attention and an audience with local and national governments can make all of the difference, particularly if we're looking for regulatory clarity on reopening properties as well. So um, that's a few wise words there from, from Tim Palmer. So a little history of IX Green Star program. It happened before I came around. I think those of you know TJ Fermano was one of our founding um, committee members. Nancy, you may have been one as well. I'm trying to trying to recall. I'm sure. No, okay, you were not. You were there in the background, influencing and encouraging. <laughs> um, uh, really, at the moment, well, where IAC Green Star came about, and what really drives it still today, is the fact that it is what it is a program that focuses on small to mid-sized meeting venues. There are other programs out there we know that focus on the guest room element, uh, on you know, on the hotels and uh, on the incentive travel sector, but there wasn't anything that really focused on a conference venue or a conference centre, and that's been that's been the backbone of the program from day one and it still is today. In uh, at the beginning of this year, there was a serious review of IAC Green Star. We felt that it wasn't challenging enough. It had been three years. So we went out to six other leading programs around the world, and we brought a task force together, which included um, contributors from Europe, from UK, Sweden, Denmark, from the US, Canada, Australia, and we brought together the brightest minds to create a truly global program. And the only way we did that was by thoroughly measuring every single one of the six leading programs around the world and seeing where we where they stood out from IAC and where we could bridge a gap, where they had relevance and where they didn't, and where we could actually go further. And I'm pleased to say in a number of areas we went further than those. So I'm I I have it on good authority that IAC has got one of the toughest programs to meet platinum standard um, you would meet the top standard in any of the others that are out there if you could do that so it has real credibility um, we set that bar higher now one of the other key characteristics of IAC Green Star is it's self-certified so we don't bring an auditing company in to audit the property uh, it is an honesty um, sort of a, a perspective and honesty um, approach and one of the reasons why that has been the case um, is because we see these applications have come in week in and week out and and they are always honest submissions because quite often in the first draw they fail uh, or they, they achieve bronze standards or silver and but they want to get higher and we go on that journey with our members it is incredibly rare to see a member that comes in uh, at a top level um, and then uh, not see their credentials and uh, and the initiatives that they're doing within their website which we do evaluate one of the other reasons why we think it's important to have it in, in this way as well is it is it allows us to create a certification, but it's cost free. So at a time where we want all of our venues to put their energy into the initiatives that are making a difference to the customer, we don't want to be doing that through paying two, three, five thousand pounds or dollars to be able to get the credential or the renewal at the end of the year. That's why it's a value add as part of your certificate as part of your membership via and your venue certification and it's 100% managed by us 
and um, all of you will be familiar with my colleague Kate Bacon. Kate is responsible for our Green Star program and guides every member through the application, um, through the awarding and through assisting in being able to take the uh, accreditation even further and higher. And just to point out as well, uh, you can resubmit at any point. So it, although it is valid for two years, you can submit at any point that you would like to. Does anyone have any questions in regards to our history or, or the structure at all before we move on? Good to go? Okay. So um, venues take this approach. First of all, they must have a green team in place. They must have a individual or a group of people that they form within the property that represent that green team uh, and everything in regards to the initiative. You complete the survey, you identify the areas of improvement, we help you set new goals, whether they're goals in the short term or in the next 12 months or two years, that doesn't matter if you want to reach high um, standards. And we also take this opportunity to highlight our members that have some of the initiatives in place if you don't. So if you're trying to eradicate the use of plastic water bottles, but the route that you found to do it is just too costly, then we will research and find an IAC member that's done that, that has a good case study and good best practice and put you in touch with it. And then we help you and once you achieve, you can promote your Green Star uh, status on your website and in your marketing. There's a special Green Star logo, which is right there. Some of our members as well over the years have had pages dedicated. Those with, as management companies have also had pages dedicated to the Green Star survey. I might have an example within the deck here, which I'll show you. Um, but again, talking about the importance of social responsibility and the environment, uh, we are seeing a lot of venues now dedicating time and resource to creating their credentials around a dedicated page. So the reuse of materials, of course, is a really big one. And none of these, again, are going to jump out as being, um, you know, sort of unusual, but it's recycling, it's looking at our linen, our non-disposable uh, cutlery, and of course, refillable water bottles. And we, again, know our industry is talking up very quickly, very, very much at the moment, shall I say, not quickly, but a lot about if we have navigated or gravitated into the disposables, into the um, single-use plastics for the purpose of COVID, it has to be temporary. We have to be looking at every moment that we can as to when we can move to something else. Uh, water conservation is another big area for us. Um, the water saving devices, landscaping strategies, some of our properties are not watering at all in their external areas. They have found other ways or they've changed their landscaping so that they um, require less watering. Um, and uh, their path washing is another example of um, you get marked down if you're path washing as opposed to finding other ways of cleaning your property unless it is repurposed or recaptured water. These are, again, just the highlights. I believe there are around 80 tenants that spread that, that you get over each of these areas. Looking at our purchasing, that's important. Our green, do you have a green purchasing policy in place? Do suppliers um, source from environmental um, uh, sources themselves for their core product? Have you got in place the little or no packaging policies? Do you refuse to work with those suppliers that cannot take away packaging or deliver in a packaging uh, minimalistic approach? And uh, of course, chemical free cleaning products are an important element too. Energy management is, is big too, um, particularly around the electric, uh, the, the, the solar power and the electric cars. So we've got one venue in Atlanta at the moment which um, can supply 30% of all of its annual electricity via solar panels that was introduced last year. And um, other great examples as well, where there are many of our members now that have got the electric charging stations for the electric cars and are encouraging their staff when, they're, uh, when, when they have staff vehicle fleets uh, to be purchasing electric cars as well. Food and beverage, as you saw at the beginning from the examples from the Meeting Room of the Future survey, is, is huge. It's the one area we really can um, not only 
make a huge difference, but also make visualize that for our meeting attendees. And whenever we're talking about the sustainable efforts that we put in place or, or, or efforts that we have taken place back a house that maybe our attendees can't see, find a way of telling that story because we have all been influenced personally um, by that whole human nature connection through COVID-19. It sharpened our minds in regards to the importance of what others are doing and the connections. So to be able to see and feel good about the venue when we do return that we are in and the way that they're dealing with things is, is great. But so many companies ask at the RFP stage that are you doing this, this and this? But when we ask whether the attendees know that they asked that question and we said yes, quite often the answer is no. They've asked the question, but our, our guests don't know that. Uh, Lotta Bowman, who most of you know, uh, is from Sweden. She runs a property uh, called Sigtuna Hoyden, uh, just outside of Sweden. Um, and um, let's just say that I act sustainability efforts over the last five years, but certainly last year when I created the European Knowledge Festival, which some of you came to in La Hoop in uh, Belgium, uh, incredible event where we went after and achieved gold in the Event Industry Council Sustainable Venues Certification was inspired by Lotta. Um, and as she points out here, sustainability is not boring. It can enrich the delicate experience and motivate the team and give them all a sense of pride. Um, and that's every little bit of giving people a sense of pride at the moment is incredibly important. Take a look at Sigtuna Hayden's website. Um, you will see lots of great examples of their blogs, of their initiatives, of their policies, of just their stories. Another one came out today. I mean, this, this lady here runs, owns her own conference center. It is her business and she built it over many years. And today there was a newsletter that went out which showed her and her team on their bikes. All they've been doing is delivering takeaways to uh, elderly residents since COVID hit and the property uh, shut down. That's been their job. They've turned themselves into a takeaway business. 120 guests were in business and the owner is there on a push bike taking the food out to the community that need it. And Sweden has been particularly badly hit with, um, uh, with the elderly community in terms of COVID. So great work they do there, they're living the dream. This is the case study, and then I'll open up to anyone else who's got a good idea. Some of you may have seen this, but I never tell, tire of telling the story. This is the story of the uniforms of the staff at this conference center, all being repurposed materials that have, their uniforms been made by the local seamstress in the town just down the road. Um, and their smile tells it all. They are incredibly proud to be a part of this. They're incredibly proud more than anything of being asked what's going on with their uniform because guests know that there's something, something connected but not. And they, tell, they get to tell this story about how their uniform is uh, you know, made from recycled um, materials, curtains, etc. cetera. Um, so really nice, always creative stories from Sweden when it comes to sustainability. One which came from one of our clients uh, in the US, uh, not only because uh, we're very happy to use IAC properties, not only because they have the type of facilities that we need for an executive level audience, but they're aligned to us to provide sustainable environments for our employees. Um, and you know, if the corporate requirements are not there asking us in the RFP, that doesn't mean it's not important to the individual. If you remember the persona we saw of the typical meeting professional, um, as an individual that could resonate and put you above your competitive set on that level or that level only. And yes, we have got the example, I was sharing it with Dan, um, recently, um, this is Dolce Hotels and Resorts. They had a dedicated uh, page here talking about what's important to them for sustainability, but then they picked up and they captured the IAC Green Star certification and the components of those. Um, and again, it just adds credibility to what you're doing, that you are constantly looking at best practice everywhere in the world to keep raising the bar for your own standards. 
So this is a bit that Kate would normally do. Um, unfortunately, she can't be with us today, so I'm going to be your second best um, uh, person to be able to talk about that. But just before I do, sorry, um, if anyone wants to come off mute, is there anything cool anyone is doing around environmental efforts at the moment that you can just share? I'll just say, Mark, overall, we're taking a look at not just sustainability, practices, but obviously a lot of other safety, et cetera, just in light of uh, you know, the times that we're in. You know, there are some things that we could do more freely, you know, the nourishment hub, how does that look differently? So all these things are important, but uh, we are also involved, and I was just talking with uh, Ryan Schneider uh, yesterday about, you know, moving forward from a Dolce perspective, uh, how are we how are we going to look in the future? You know, I'm not suggesting that some of this will change here, but there are some things that we need to look at and have a discussion with our partners so that uh, we align with what people continue to expect, which evolves, right? So that's a big part of our discussion and we're going through that over the next few months. I don't wanna say the dust has settled, but we feel now is a good time as we continue to open up uh, properties and we're on our recovery path here. Um, also being mindful that you know, our business mix has changed, right? So kind of we've been transient and flip-flopping right now through, through next year or for the foreseeable future, right? And every indication says maybe by Q3 of next year, generally speaking. So uh, it'll be interesting to see where we land in the next few months. And Dan, um, without putting you on the spot, as you have you moved past now the immediate changing of the way you used to do it to comply with the today um, and the reopening as it might be to actually now starting to design, particularly around food and beverage, changes that will set you apart from the competition? Are you doing things that that let's say, for instance, you continue to consider the importance of the sustainability food waste so that you can go out there and positively underpin the changes you're making or are you still in that yeah I, I i can't i could speak broadly mark i can't speak by property we've got some great yeah. opportunities right you know, our our hotels there are recovery plans on the operation side recovery plans on the sales and marketing side recovery plans on the staffing side uh, those are always at the forefront, and I have seen some things. You know, we've looked at, you know, how do we manage buffets, and how does that look now yeah. moving forward? And so, yes, uh, we, we are. There are some things in place. Uh, they may differ from property to property. There are also, without getting into a lot more detail, local ordinances that have an impact. Maybe not on sustainability, but other things that we're looking at doing. So, from a corporate level. We're having a dialogue and we actually just sent a survey out to all of our Dolce uh, leaders to uh, get that kind of feedback and so that we could start to have that discussion and, and see where we land. Great, thank you, Dan. Yeah. So how to become a Green Star certified venue. Um, everyone can see the screen still, I hope. Um, Within the resources section of our web page, we have a, uh, a link within there which you follow in. It's a SurveyMonkey based report and you can go in and, and go back again and, and cover that off. So it's very straightforward. You can assign that to somebody. You can partially complete it, go away. And as long as you are on the same PC and you come back, you can continue to do that. Uh, or you can submit it and send us a note to say that you're, you've got some elements that you would like to do afterwards. But it's very straightforward. It's got expl explanations around it. And as I say, those 80 different tenants um, are, you know, are tick box or comment box uh, in, uh, environment. So that's how we do it there. You complete the survey, it's submitted to us. Uh, we will evaluate where you've made uh, comments or you're not compliant. Uh, but you feel that you're doing something that is that is different, maybe more effective, then we pick those up in the comment box. And normally within a week, Kate will have come back having fully reviewed it. Um, quite often it's quite it's a lot sooner than that. Um, and then we award you the certification. 
And if you look at our website at the moment, as I mentioned, we've got very few platinum, a lot of gold, and then we have silver and we have bronze status. Wherever a member starts, I say it's okay because they can clearly see from the results of the survey where they haven't met and can go after reclassification, recertification the very next week if they change things and put things in place. There is no time frame of which they need to keep that certification. Um, and then uh, really it's as simple as making sure that you make the most of, it, most of it in your marketing on your website, telling your sales team that you have it and your other team members um, and promoting it with pride because it is a really tough certification and that's come straight from you know the, the voices of people like Events Industry Council that have created a, an awesome certification program for meeting professionals and for venues. Um, and they really like ours. You can go on after, if you want to go further than I actually, you can go on to the Event Industry Council's Certificate in Venue Management as well. And they will take your achievement with IAC and use that the, as a foundation so that you don't have to do it again. Uh, that is a cost-based certification though, just to highlight, so it's a little bit different. But again, got huge credibility. It depends how far you would like to go in regards to that. So um, we are going through a program now where, for instance, we've got some great results. We still get uh, a lot, even through this period, we're seeing a lot of our members going through this process if they haven't before. They're using this time um, to be able to do that and prepare themselves for the reopening. And it's really heartening to see. We've got countries that have gone 100% compliant. So for our friends in the UK here, um, we have 100% compliance in the United Kingdom. Uh, Groups like De Vere Hotels that have got with us 12 properties uh, under Alan Corla went, went out and again through all the property GMs just spoke of a desire to be at a group level, um, you know, having something really strong to talk about to corporate clients. So we've seen countries go 100% compliant, we've seen groups go 100% compliant and we've seen lots of our independent properties again using this time to prepare, get these certifications in place whilst their team have got time. Um, and then when we, when we you know, come back and we bounce back, it's all in place. So it's very straightforward, but um, on that basis, um, let me open it up to, to everybody. Hopefully that's given you a flavor at least for Green Star, but happy to have any, any questions or comments on, on anything you've seen. Um, or anything you haven't seen that you think you maybe should be looking at? No? Nancy, it's not like you to be this quiet. It must be budget season. No, you're just looking forward to the 4th of July. Yeah, I'm going to the budget season. In the 4th of July weekend already, right? <laughs> um. No, I, I, I mean, it's, I think it's a fantastic program and the revamp this year, I think has done tremendous things for it. Um, uh, you know, it's, it, it's really interesting dichotomy right now because I think all of us are in processes of, of adding waste into our operations that we never expected to do it, but for all the right reasons. And mm -hmm. I think um, this kind of mindset helps us make better decisions along that way, knowing we have to do what we have to do, but we can do it in a way that is thoughtful and being and, conscious. And can, yeah, and conscious with our with our with our um, with our stance on this. So I'm, yeah. it's a great guiding force. When we look at the release of the meeting room of the future report on Monday, um, it's interesting how through this digitalization process that we've gone through in recent months, how things like uh, the digital yeah. whiteboards are becoming a lot more popular. Before we went into COVID, it was, they were becoming popular because it eradicated the use of, of, of paper uh, and then waste. And so they were cool from that perspective and some venues have gone 100% compliant. But actually through the last four or five months, gosh, it's, quite, you know, it's getting close, isn't it? Um, you know, through the last few months, now we've become all very used to working with remote digital whiteboards over, you know, Zoom and, and other areas. So when we get back to our properties, great opportunity to digitize where we had some of those paper-based products again in the future. So there will be some, some, you know, some catalysts to us doing more in the future that's born from our, you know, from our experiences recently. But um, uh, as I say, you'll hear, hear a lot about it from other industry bodies 
IMEX, uh, EIBTM, Joint Min Meetings Industry Council, their web webinars on just recently had a whole section on how individuals' behaviours and expectations will change coming out of this. And they will just care more about our environment because we can see what happens when we don't. And their link was very much to those that have been more vulnerable to COVID have been those that have got respiratory problems living in inner cities. So now we have, you know, the smog has lifted. How do we keep it that way? Um, so really clear links, I think, to health and well-being as well. But any other questions before I close? I, I don't have a question. It was more just a comment, actually. So I thought something that I've came up recently talking about additional waste for due to COVID. Obviously, we're, we're looking at how we look at lunch offering and, and single use items. Um, and actually, one of our big corporates came came back to us and we, we presented the different options that we're evaluating and looking at. And their comment was still very much, you know, although safety and confidence of our delegates is, is really key, we don't want to go back on our sustainability um, policies and mindset and all the good work we've been doing over the last 18 months. So we don't want that to compromise. And should we have to go down a disposable, we want it to be very short um, lived or, you know, for one particular event and not for all of their events and want to continue in a, in a sort of served buffet style environment rather than um, going single use bagged up and pre-packaged which I thought was good. That's that's super encouraging to see Claire if ever you get a chance if you've got a relationship with that client where you could get that quote from them um, and if they're a big brand behind it that would be excellent because it's those sort of pioneering views and people that are looking forward that can really help us and help educate others but um, yeah, that's, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, well, all, thank you for joining today. Um, always nice to see you. Love to see your smiling faces as well. Um, wish you all the best. Um, great holiday weekend, Dan and Nancy. Um, and just a great rainy weekend for Claire and Dennis and I and the others from the UK and Europe because the weather is dreadful at the moment, right? Yeah. We'll send the sun all your way. <laughs> well, it's it's one or the other. It's either bright sunshine and extremely hot, or windy and raining. Yes. No. I, I have to admit, I've got a lovely sunshine, and it's a nice, it's nice and warm up here. So we're we're all right. We're good. We're good for a good weekend, I think. Wow, we're I'm on my way, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Okay. Take care, everyone. Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye. Bye.